Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. In this tutorial, I will be teaching you 10 different Power Query tips and tricks or you can also call these as the best practices of Power Query which every Power BI developer must know. Please go through the entire video and let me know in the comment section which of these best practices are new to you. So let's get started with this tutorial. The first best practice that I will be sharing with you today is about using parameters. Now parameters are basically a way where you can store any value which can be reused in different ways. For example, now in this tutorial I will be teaching you how you can store the server name information using a parameter and reuse that parameter again and again. Now let's imagine a scenario where you are creating a Power BI report and you're using the dev server to bring in all the data and then once you have created your report you've tested your report out and then you want to move that particular report to your production server now manually you cannot go and change the server name in each of the table names that you have in your data set so to avoid all of that you can create a parameter so i'll quickly show you how you can create a parameter so you'll have to go to your power query editor and within the power query editor under the home tab you have something called as manage parameter so let's click on new parameter over here Let's give it a name. In this case, I'm going to call this as DB name and you can choose the type over here. For now, I'm just going to leave it at text because my server name is a text value. I'm going to paste my server name over here and click on OK. And now when I click on SQL Server to import the data, I have an option to choose the parameter name in this case, the DB name. And then I can click on OK and that will display all the tables that I have in my database name. Now I can quickly import any of the tables here. For example, let me just import these two tables over here. And let's say I have now built my report, I have tested my report out, and now I want to move this report to the production server. Now, if you have to do this manually, then you have to come back over here, go to the edit query, go to your advanced editor, or you can go to your source over here, and then change the DB name. Now, since we have used the parameter, all I have to do is I come back to my parameter over here, and instead of the current value over here, let's say instead of localhost, I'm just gonna say prod slash localhost and save this. Now that it is saved, you can see that it is already throwing me an error saying that the prod SQL Express is not available. Of course, I just use that as an example, but when whenever you have the production server available and when you point this particular DB name to that server, these tables will get updated from the production server, saving you a lot of time to replace your database names. Now the next best practice is to filter out your data in the early stages. Now some of the connectors in Power BI will take advantage of your filters through query folding. Now you may ask what is query folding? Query folding basically sends the data transformation and filter commands to the data source where it is executed. This will basically reduce the amount of data that is transferred and processed within Power BI. This will help in faster transformation and also increase the performance within Power BI. And it's also a best practice to look at the data that is only relevant to you and you're not looking at data which is not relevant to you. Now let's say I have imported all of the data set over here and I want to filter out some of the job titles. For example, I only want to have the managers in this particular table. So what I can do is I can go to my drop down over here and type in manager and filter my data. Now in this case, let's right click on the step that we have applied over here which is filtered rows and you can see that it is displaying the option which says view native query. And when I click on the native query, this is actually the query which will be sent back to my SQL server where it will get executed and bring in the data. And you can also see that there's a title job title filter that has been applied in this query itself. So the data gets filtered within the SQL server and then it's processed within the Power BI. This reduces a lot of time. Now this will break in a certain stage. For example, let's say, I want to split this particular column here. So I go to split column here and then select delimiter and my space is the delimiter over here and I click on OK. Now when I click on, when I right click on the change type over here, you see that I no longer see the view native query option, which means that this is not query folding. This particular step or transformation is happening within the Power BI. So make sure you try and apply all of your filters and transformations 
which will make use of the query folding to reduce all of your processing time. Now let's move on to the third best practice. The third best practice is to temporarily work against a subset of your data. Whenever you add new steps to your query in the Power Query Editor and if you think that the transformation is very slow, consider only having the first few rows first for the operations so that it limits the number of rows that you are working against. And then once you have added all of your steps you need, then you can get rid of the remove first steps. Now let me give you an example. Let's say for example you're doing some expensive operations. You have a huge data set that you are working on. You have millions of rows. Let's say for example you sort the data and this is taking a lot of time. I only have about 30,000 rows in my data set over here and it already took a few seconds for me to sort the data. So to avoid taking a lot of time after each and every step, what you can do is you can go to your home tabs, go to keep rows and select keep top rows and choose the number of rows for example that you want to have you can click on ok now you are limiting your data view here to only 100 rows and now you can perform all of your transformation that you need now let's say for example you want to expand some of the tables that are over here I can simply come down and I want to expand the territory name over here I have now added the territory name it only took a couple of seconds for me to bring in the territory name but if I had all of the data it would take a lot of time now that I have applied all the steps in my power query and I can now go back to the keep first row step over here and click on the close button over here so that I delete that particular step so that when I click on delete here my rest of the transformation still remains the same and now the applied steps are affecting the entire data set and not just the top few rows. So by doing this you'll be able to save a lot of time especially when you're dealing with a huge data set. Now the fourth best practice that I want to share with you today is the column profiling. Now not many users are aware of what column profiling is. So if you go to your view tab, there are three different options that are available. Column distribution, column profile and column quality. Column profiling basically helps you in exploring your data set which will in turn help you in understanding the quality of your data set, the distribution that is happening within the data set and also the column profile. So let's go through each one of them and see how they help you in understanding or exploring your data set. So when I check the column quality over here, these three level of information gets added to each and every column in your table. So when I look at the sales order ID over here, it is telling me that the 100% of the data is valid in this particular column. There are no errors here and there are no empty values. So let's quickly scroll down towards the right over here and here we see that there are 50% of the values here are valid and there are 50% of the values here which are empty. So there are null values present in this particular column. So likewise this is giving you information of how good the data quality is of that particular column. I have made a detailed tutorial on the column profiling. You can check that video out. And the next option here is the column profile. Column profile basically gives you some of the column statistics for example Let's take a look at the subtotal column over here. The subtotal column here, the we have the column statistics available for this particular column, basically giving you the count of the number of rows that we have in the data set, the error values, if there are any empty values, what are the distinct values, what are the unique values. Basically, all of your column statistics are available over here. You will also be able to see the distribution of that particular column. So the information that is available through column profile really helps you understand the kind of data set that you are dealing with, especially when you have an unknown data set that you are working with. Now the last option here is the column distribution. The column distribution basically helps you understand how the values are distributed. For example, when I click on territory name over here, it is telling me there are 10 distinct values here and there are zero unique values. Now the next best practice is to apply your expensive operations to Towards the end. Now what do I mean by expensive operations? Now these are those operations which basically require Power Query to read the entire data set. Something like performing a sort operation on your data set. So when you sort the data, Power Query would need to read the entire data set to be able to sort the data. Likewise when you add a conditional column to your data set, so Power Query will need to go through the entire column in that case to be able to add that conditional column. Now these are the expensive operations which take a lot of time. So before you perform all of these 
expensive operations it's always best to filter out all of your data so that you reduce your data set size so once we have filtered out the data and have applied some of the transformations then you can proceed with your expensive operations like your sorting of the data if you want to replace values like adding conditional column to your data set text transformations like splitting or formatting so these are some of the expensive operations that i suggest you keep this towards the end the sixth best practice is to document your work and when i say document your work all of your power query steps that you apply over here they have to be meaningful when you share this particular report with somebody else and when they look at a particular step they should easily be able to understand what this particular step is doing in this case it just says expanded sales sales dot territory i don't know what i'm doing by expanding sales territory over here so i can simply right click here give it a more meaningful name in this case i can say expanded territory name now you might not be able to add in all the information that you want when you rename the step because it has very limited text over here but what you can do is you can simply right click over here and click on properties over here you'll be able to add in more information so that you understand what is happening in that particular step to just give you an example i added some description over here to say expanded territory name from the territory table i can now click on okay now that particular text is being added over here and you can also see that there's a little information icon being displayed over here and when you hover over that particular icon you'll be able to see what's the description that you have added in here you will also be able to see this description when you go to the advanced editor over here you see the description that we added is appearing right here just above the territory name step now let's move on to the seventh best practice now the seventh best practice is a very silly one so when i go to my advanced editor over here you see that before every single step that we have applied over here there is a special character over here likewise there is a special character here as well and that kind of looks ugly when you have a special character in there now how can you avoid this you can avoid this by simply right clicking and renaming this particular step over here and get rid of any spaces that you have between them. You can either add an underscore over here or leave this without adding any spaces. So let me add, confirm this. Let's repeat the same process here for the rest of these steps as well. I have now renamed all of my steps. Let's go back to the advanced editor. And now when you look at this, it looks really clean without any of the special characters or even the double quotes that we used to see earlier. It is very simple now, sorted rows and then followed by that particular step. This is really handy one and I really advise you to use this particular tip to make your advanced editor look really clean. Now let's move on to the next best practice. Now in this best practice, you'll be able to split your queries. For example, in my table that I have over here, I have expanded a lot of different tables over here and then applied transformations. Now all of these steps that I've applied over here are basically not performing any kind of transformations, but just expanding those columns. And the rest of the steps that you see here is where I'm actually transforming the data. Now let's say for example, now I've already added a lot of steps over here and I want to split the query into two. I can now split this query into two and keep one of the query here which is basically coming straight from the database and have another query where I will be performing all of the calculations or transformations within that particular query. So to do that I can simply come to this step over here which says change type and select extract previous. So when I click on that it asks me for a name. So I'm gonna type in sales header transformation and then click on OK. Now you see that I have another query created. In this particular query, I have all of these steps wherein I have performed the transformation. And in my previous table over here, I only have those steps wherein I have expanded the tables and performed calculations and have bought in the data straight from the SQL Server. And now if you have to perform more transformations, you, you'll be able to do it on this table here. And it's also easier for you to understand what is happening with those transformations. The next best practice that I want to show you is about grouping your queries. Now, let's say you have 
a lot of tables that you are dealing with and it becomes really difficult to understand what is happening you always have to stay organized so to stay organized there is something called as group queries so you can select your queries here for example I have two different tables here which contains the human resources information so I can simply right click here and select move to group and since I don't have any groups over here I can create a new group and call this as HR and click on confirm and the rest of the tables over here get grouped into the other queries so I'm going to select all of these sales tables over here or sales queries over here I'm going to select new group over here and type in sales give it a name and then click on ok now all my sales queries have been organized under the sales table or the sales group and my all of my HR related queries are under the HR group so by doing this you'll be able to stay organized within your power query the last best practice or a tip that I would like to share with you all is let's say you have applied a lot of steps in your power query and now you would like to delete some of them. Let's say for example in this case I have expanded all of the tables over here and I would like to delete all of them. Now instead of deleting every single step here one by one what I can do is I can right click on the step that I would like to delete from till the end and select delete until end now when you do this it will ask you for a confirmation because you will not be able to undo this particular step when you click on delete all of the steps here where i have expanded the tables will get deleted so these were the 10 best practices or tips and tricks that i wanted to share with you guys so let me know in the comment section how many of these tips and tricks are new to you. So that's it guys in this particular tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.